Hi everyone, I'm Tally, this is Farrell and we are bored of it and welcome to our first impressions video for Tanara's Adventures. Now this is a dungeon crawler big box campaign expansion to Arena the Conquest which is a miniatures skirmish game. We decided to do a first impressions video for this because their campaign is going live today on Kickstarter and we just wanted to give some first impressions to support that and because we're going on holiday so yes. might be able to put out a full times review. of the essence <laughs> so but we will continue <laughs> but we will put out a full review at some point in the future and just important to know that we were provided this review copy by the publisher which is dragori games yeah so first came the game arena of the conquest which was as Holly said a bit of a skirmish battler player plus vet player versus player where you could kind of fight dungeon and dragon style in a little arena against other heroes. And this came with a little campaign expansion that was very well received. So they in turn, they made this huge campaign think Gloomhaven style expansion uh, called Tanara's Adventures, which is in the process of fulfillment now. And their current Kickstarter campaign is Tanara's Ultimate, which has a few different versions. So. Essentially, they learned a lot from this first process and they've put it back into re-implementing it for a better version. And so you can, Tanara's Ultimate is basically this 2.0 with better rules updates, um, more content. They combine when you are running the campaign into one book rather than at the moment you have to flip through a few different books and a lot of quality and life improvements, basically. There's also the option to get this expansion and the base game in one package for this new campaign. And also if you, like us, now have uh, the original Tanaris Adventures, there's an upgrade kit you can get. So how does it play? Well, so far our experience has been, it's been a little bit mixed between, I would say, Sleeping Gods and Gloomhaven. Yeah. Uh -huh. So like Gloomhaven, it's card based and scenario based. So you'll have a scenario set up like here, and it will tell you, you know, in this room, your goal is to do this. So we've only done the two tutorial games. And usually it was, it was the first one, it was kind of kill all the monsters. Mm -hmm. The second time it was, uh, there's some monsters around, but really what you have to do is reduce this magical shield. And then the story will progress and you kind of move through the scenario. And what you're doing is you have a hero and you have a bunch of cards and these are called primary attacks or special attacks and you can also do a basic attack which kind of never runs out but a little bit like gloomhaven where you're cycling cards here you have these cards and they have an ability and so you say okay i'm going to do this attack you roll a dice and each enemy has a defense value if you equal or get higher with the dice roll you get to hit it you do what it says on the card and then that card flips over and you have to use all of your cards before you get them back so planning is quite crucial, but there's also a lot of other stuff that comes into the combat. So a lot of status effects, a lot of uh, the enemies are all quite different. They have even one enemy has multiple different variants. Mm -hmm. So you have a couple of enemies any one time doing very different things and reacting differently. But generally the, the combat's quite simple and easy to understand. And there's quite a nice little push pull of where if you attack a they call villains here, but a monster for ease. If you attack one, it will then attack immediately after your turn ends because you've kind of triggered it. It does a reaction. But if you leave them, so say if you all target one enemy and you leave some unattacked at the end of the round, then they will all activate and they will end up doing extra damage because they haven't been provoked. So you get this nice little push-pull kind of decision to make of do you want to try and take out one in one turn or round, or do you want to kind of spread your damage across so that they're not doing more damage to you at the end when all the yeah. heroes are exhausted? Would you, do you want to talk a little bit about the kind of story elements? Sure. So at the beginning of the game, it's really... Cool, we'll, we'll get to our yeah. thoughts, but <laughs> try to be unbiased in how it works at this stage. Um, you kind of go through some story points, you make some choices for each individual player, and then you take some kind of different colored cubes 
and then whatever your choices are, it'll kind of recommend or give you a choice of which player you should go for. Yeah, which type of character, Let's which type character. of class. So it's all very Dungeons and Dragons-esque. Exactly. And then, yeah, the, the very story-driven, very thematic. So in each scenario, like you said, there's some enemy that you're trying to fight. But then after the scenario has ended, you might also get some more choices to choose from, either as a group or individually, yeah. which will push the, for the story forward and maybe give you some more options for next time, create some um, locations, let's say, outside of the main board, give you more things to interact with. And that's how it kind of merges together with the actual gameplay. Yeah. So. I think that's just a quick overview, but now we'll just go to our first impressions and what we think. So as said earlier, to me, it's quite reminiscent of a mix between Gloomhaven and Sleeping Gods. And probably my favorite part so far is the, the part that you kind of do at the very start before you even get to the yeah. battle. Because I uh, say, so yeah, Sleeping Gods has but really just choose your own adventure-esque. It's that you have this journal and you kind of will read a passage and it will say, what do the players want to do? And you will decide. And then it will take you to another passage and you, you kind of are picking your own adventure before the scenario begins. And this can end up affecting, and I think as we go through the game more and more, it will more and more affect the scenario, even altering which scenario you get when you kind of get to the end of this little story, choose your own adventure bit. Yeah. And it's quite interesting as well because there's already elements of what you pick, maybe even which scenario you go to affects what happens in the next scenario. Mm -hmm. So we had in the second tutorial mission elements where basically the, the monsters in the first room were always missing their roles when they're trying to attack us so they do less damage because we had snuck past... Um, or we'd sneakily killed their guards at the expense of not saving a family kind of fleeing from the monsters. Mm -hmm. So we had to make that choice. Uh, but then if we'd saved that family, things would have been different in another room. So I find this whole aspect really interesting and it, it's really fun to read through and have a little decide what you want to do. So that was quite cool. And I think this is something that will expand further and further and become more diverse because the campaign's not linear. Yeah. as you go through. I think that's one of my favourite parts of this is I really feel like the gameplay and the story merges super well. Like you can imagine whatever is happening like mechanically on the board with different tokens being put on. There's a reason in terms of the story, right? It's yeah. very easy to imagine why you've got certain tokens there. Oh, it's because we snuck past the guards. Yeah. I think it merges really well. So for me, I feel quite quite immersed in the story and I'm not uh, usually a, a story game person. I like playing them, of course, but it wouldn't be my first choice. But I really feel like everything merges super well here. And then because it does that, it helps to remember what to do in a way or why things are like they are and mm -hmm. what to do next. And you can really lift the story up off the board, I think. Yeah. I personally think this would do really well with some more like role playing um, because the turns are quite fluid. So you were saying in the beginning, you know, lots of different things that are happening and you can um, help your teammates during their turns by activating some of your power. So everything is quite fluid in a way. Yeah. And because the enemies will activate when triggered and then suddenly they're taking a turn before you take your turn. To be fair, I sometimes get a little bit lost with whose turn you it is. Yeah, I've got a little bit lost. But I think if I if we did some more kind of role-playing elements, I would be able to keep up because it's like, huzzah, the enemy attacks, right? Yeah. And it's very thematic in that way. And for me, it just really merges well and lifts lifts the, the gameplay like off the board and you can imagine the story, I think. Yeah, I think I, I think the, the combat is, is quite sharp as well. Yeah. And I think, as you say, this fluidity I do like that it could be that, you know, two monsters go after the heroes all take their turn, or it could be that yeah. I go, monster go, you go, monster go, because it, it just means that it's not so static and by the numbers every round, you, yeah. you kind of have 
different opportunities and you can manipulate the situation. And yeah, I think there's this aspect of when to use your cards and when yeah. to attack a monster or not attack. It's all quite interesting and, and you kind of get, have a tough decision to get caught in the middle of what you should go for. And there's some nice um, kind of strategic elements that you can do on your yeah. turn. Then like you said, you have powers that you can activate on someone else's turn to help them out or even on a, a monster's turn to kind of make their turn potentially go worse or damage them or whatever. Exactly, yeah. So I think, the, like you said, the, the combat is quite simple and the actions you do are quite simple. But the complexity comes from, um, not that it's super complex, but comes from how to use it. Yeah. Um, so it's really easy in a way to immerse yourself in the game and the story because you don't have to worry about oh, what does his action mean or there's some complicated, you know, mechanism. Yeah. It's very simple. So then it allows you to, yeah, really focus on the gameplay and the story, I think. Yeah. So I think what's important to note is that this probably is not our genre of game. Um, we were okay on Gloomhaven. Jaws of the Lion. Jaws of the Lion. Specifically. And I mean, it's like dungeon crawlers aren't really our thing, right? Uh, and campaign games like like this style, yeah, we don't dislike them. We don't. Yeah. We're not wild about them. But I think we we were both probably surprised by how I definitely was it, how good a time we had. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I will say I think if you come to negatives, a lot of negatives is probably just the the front loading of getting it to the table because it's like this big box with all these components and going through the rules. But it, it's kind of hard to say that because a lot of the point of this Kickstarter that's going live now is that they're addressing all of this stuff. Like at the moment, you have to flip between about three different books uh, as you go through one scenario, this book, that book, another book. And what they're doing now is they're, they're kind of doing it by missions so you'll have one book for the first five missions let's say and then second book for mm -hmm. the, so you everything's in one and then they're updating the rules to make the tutorials better and more streamlined uh, and kind of more maybe walk you through it so it'll be interesting to see what improvements and i think i've even looked at a document and they have kind of yeah made some effort into this yeah but do you have do you have any gameplay negatives you want to bring up not gameplay negatives it's just per, like personally like i said i can't yeah sometimes keep up with whose turn it is because it is so fluid, but I really think that can be turned into a positive and give the game a bit of spark in a way. That's just personal. Yeah. Um, I think one thing say, I'm looking forward to is that you definitely in this have a lot more elements which we haven't seen. So you get the, eventually the ability to choose what scenarios you do based on what you think is most important and drive the story in the way you want it to go. Uh, there's definitely a lot of branching paths in this. There's also kind of a city management phase uh, that we haven't got to yet. There's a kind of world phase. Um, and this kind of happens. So there's cycles of weeks where you might do adventure and then kind of city building and then adventure city, adventure city, and then world building. Um, so we're looking forward to exploring that and seeing like even more content. Definitely. And also upgrading the characters, getting things yeah. more interesting. But I guess that's all, 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 all to come. But I think we'll definitely, like I said, we're going to have a review and we're going to keep up playing it because I think we're interested to see what comes. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, if we it definitely have similar vibes to, to Gloomhaven, I think at the moment this version maybe has some rough ed edges, but there's also a lot to like and some things that we like more than experiencing Gloomhaven, like yeah. the story and the branching. So it's definitely, if you're into, you know, your Dungeons and Dragons or your miniature games or your big epic story campaigns, it's certainly worth looking at and reading some reviews of this and we'll have one out. Yeah, my first impression is that I am excited to continue playing. So. Yes, and honestly, I think we're both really surprised by that. So, yep, so I was Tanaris Adventures, a first impressions. And thanks for watching. We hope it was helpful. Please ask us any questions you might want to know. And please consider subscribing if you found it helpful. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. See ya.